Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So we've probably all come across the use of games for instructional or learning purposes. And the paper I'm looking at today is a meta-analysis paper of the effects of such games on learning. Such games are called serious games. And the hypothesis is that they achieve some sort of learning effect by changing cognitive processes and also by increasing motivation among learners. But until very recently, there hasn't been a lot of empirical data backing up those claims. What the authors are doing in this paper is a meta-analysis, which means that they look at a lot of existing studies and try to draw broad conclusions by looking at that entire range of findings. Before we get too far along, we should define what we mean by a serious game. To start with, I think we can all agree that a computer game is something that's interactive, it has a bunch of agreed upon rules and constraints, and is directed towards clear goals and overcoming challenges to get to those goals. Games provide feedback as you play them, and usually have some way to monitor progress. The difference when we speak of serious games is that the main goal of the game is not to have fun or to be entertained, but for training or education. The two main supposed benefits of using serious games when compared with conventional learning methods are that they yield higher learning gains and that they have a higher level of retention. For this meta-analysis, the authors narrowed it down to 39 studies, and this got them 77 pairwise comparisons between learning outcomes with serious games versus conventional instructional methods. More than half of them were conducted in the last five years, and if you sum up participants across all of them, there were about five and a half thousand participants. So what did the authors find? When we look at learning, they found that serious games were more effective compared to conventional training methods. And more importantly, that these gains were sticky. They also found that the positive effects of multiple training sessions with serious games was larger compared to conventional instruction methods. But even so, the really important thing to note is that serious games are more effective when they are used in conjunction with other instructional methods rather than when they are used exclusively. Serious games are also more effective when they are played in groups rather than alone. Now let's look at motivation rather than cognition. The assumption has always been that serious games would motivate learners more. And that is carried over from the lure of most mainstream commercial computer games. However, in this meta-analysis, the authors found that serious games were not more motivating than conventional instruction methods. Now, one factor for why that is could be that leisure games are chosen by players in terms of when they want to play it, whereas serious games are part of a curriculum. And so the choice of when to play them and how much to play them is necessarily somewhat restricted. But the author surmised that another reason for this might be that the goals of instruction and entertainment might be at odds with each other, which is to say you can either make a game that is effective at teaching you something or a game that is really, really fun to play. To put it another way, the worlds of game design and instructional design are not yet integrated. So that was a quick look at a meta-analysis that looked at the cognitive and motivational effects of using serious games for training and instruction. And the authors found that, yes, there are some good benefits to using serious games when it comes to cognition and learning, but that they are not necessarily more motivating than conventional methods. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time.
Thank you very much.